Hello, everybody. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. And once again, I choose to worship God. You can never go wrong when you're worshiping and praising the name of Jesus. Today, we're going to pray especially for the Ukraine people. I don't understand everything what's going on there. I've heard the good, the bad, and the ugly. But one thing I do know is that when there is war, people get hurt. And so today I'm praying for an, a divine intervention of God for especially, number one, the Christian community in the Ukraine. And then I pray for those who don't know God, but will see the hand of God come and that they will change their hearts and come to Christ. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 7, and verse 1 through 20, and also you can go to uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, you know the story about the four lepers. The whole town was surrounded. People were starving. People were eating babies, and people were eating donkey brains, and it's, it's a bad deal. There were four lepers that were standing up there, and they usually get food from the people inside the city. That didn't happen. So they said, if we stay here, we die, but let's go to the enemy's camp. Maybe they will uh, you know, take us in as captive and at least give us something to eat. But they said, we got to do something. So they went towards the enemy's camp. Well, there was before that, there was the prophet of God in chapter seven that said within 24 hours, there's going to be enough food for everybody. Well, one of the government officials thought that was funny and said, it'll never happen. Elisha turned to him and said to him, you'll see it, but you'll not partake of it. Well, the story goes on. The four uh, lepers go towards the camp, and God sends a thunder, whatever, scared the uh, army, and they ran away. That was a divine intervention of God. They went there. The lepers ate a bunch of food. I'm really making this story fast. They ate a bunch of food. They said, we can't. We got to share it. They go back to the city, and they tell them what's, what happened. They when the, the people from the city, it was like a, a, a Kmart special, and they ran out there, and the guy that laughed at him, he got run over and died, and so they went out there and participated, and it was a divine intervention of God. Another divine intervention of God is when God used a donkey to talk to a man, all right? That's found in chapter uh, 22, verse 28. Then you might say, well, that's just things that happened in the Old Testament. Well, some marvelous things happened in the New Testament where the angels of God came and opened up the prison doors and they got out. Hallelujah. Another intervention of God was people, I'm sure people were praying for Saul. They were scared out of their living minds about this guy. Could you imagine when they said, oh, he's coming to Prescott Valley, Arizona to kill everybody, you know? That's Christians and put them in jail. I tell you, there'd be a prayer meeting. There'd be a prayer meeting. So I believe the Christians were praying. God heard their prayer intervention. And here comes Saul, gets knocked off his high horse, hallelujah, and uh, repents and, and becomes one of the great men in the Bible. That was the divine intervention of God. Um, I had a, when I was going to Bible school, I uh, was on my way to preach the gospel with a group of guys in Cavalier, to Cavalier, North Dakota. And I was just goofing around and I was intrigued by a CB radio, never had one. So I talked into my hand as if I was talking into a CB radio. And I said, we're, there, we're going to Cavalier, North Dakota to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, believing God for signs, wonders, and miracles, etc., etc. And I was driving a black 1960 Chevrolet car. And I looked to my left and I saw a highway patrolman just sitting there. And uh, so I always, when I was a sinner, I never got caught by the cops. I always left moments before they came. I must have been prophetic even back then. And so, uh, but I didn't like police officers, uh, even after I was a Christian. And uh, God had to deal with that. And so uh, I gave, I told my friend, go ahead and drive. I'm getting sleepy. He drove my car. And when we came into Cavalier, North Dakota, I woke up in a startle, and I said, there's all kinds of cops in this city. What did you do? And um, as we parked in front of the pastor's uh, uh, home, the, there were like four highway patrol cars and some sheriff cars, you know. They were following us all the way from Jamestown, North Dakota. Well, we had the service that night, and then my friends went out witnessing and inviting people to the church, and they knocked on this one guy's door, and he happened to be the sheriff. And he, uh, my friend said, hey, we'd like to have you come to the church, blah, blah, blah. 
And the guy said to him, he said, you need to fix the, two, uh, the two-way radio in your car because it bled over into the state highway patrol radio. And he read, he read uh, from the paper that they, you know, typed out exact words that I had said, okay, talking in my hand. And so uh, they followed us from Jamestown, North Dakota to Cavalier, North Dakota, because they thought it was a code for stealing cars. I guess that was going on there a lot during that time. And so um, and then, you know, it, it was just a, a marvelous story of of the intervention of God. And from what I understand, there was a backslidden police officer or or sheriff or highway patrolman that heard this message come over the radio. And uh, so that was a divine intervention. And I have many more stories, and you have stories of divine intervention of God. That's what I'm believing for for the people in Ukraine that there will be a divine intervention of God that will come in there and literally do a miracle, especially for the Christian people, and that there would be food delivered to them by the angels of God, and the list goes on. I believe that we're going to hear testimonies from the Ukraine that God literally did miracle after miracle after miracle in Jesus' name, and I'm believing for that in the Jesus name. And I'm also believing that there will be a line drawn in Jesus name to Mr. Putin, and he cannot go any further than that. Then I believe that God will supernaturally blind the soldiers and they'll walk right by the Christian home or the Christian huddled, whatever. They won't see him in Jesus name. So let's declare and decree that there will be a divine intervention of God for the people in Ukraine. In Jesus' name, amen.